Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about writing negative messages. With business communications come some negative messages. It doesn't matter whether you're a CEO or if you're at the bottom of the totem pole at whatever company that you're working for. At some point in time, you're going to have to deliver negative information to a client or to someone within your company. In every company at some point in time, prices are going to have to be raised, whether there's a service that's offered or it's a product related industry. At some point in time, prices will change. So you have to pass that on to the customer or the client. When you do so, you have to let them know. Some companies use this as a chance to not only let their customer know that the price is going to change, but also to remind them of the services that they're offering. Uh, occasionally, they'll find a way to offer a new service to them. At the very least, they'll be sure to remind them of all the wonderful things that they've been offering all this time. And they might even highlight some of those things or some of those services and products that customers might forget about. For example, you might notice that um, Amazon um, will annually change their price and at the same time they'll put out press releases or news releases talking up their music service or limited music service that they offer all of their customers for free. And that's a way that they let you know that hey there's this service that we offer you. It is limited but we do offer it to you for free and that free has an asterisk next to it by the way. In case you've ever seen it before it looks a little something like this and that asterisk of course means there's something going on there right it's not completely free but this is part of the way that companies manage their negative message this has completely taken our minds off of the fact that they've raised the price of amazon and our our yearly subscription right now we're talking about their free music subscription uh, so before going over what the book offers you, the first thing I'd like to go over with you, this is called <clears throat> the Stewie Insult Sandwich. And yes, that's right, the Stewie Insult Sandwich. If you've ever watched Family Guy, which I'm a little embarrassed to admit that I have in the past and that I still sometimes do, there is a character on Family Guy called Stewie. It's the baby. I don't necessarily endorse all or promote all of the views promoted by the show, I should note. Neither does the school, or any school for that matter. But Stewie does talk at one point in depth about the insult sandwich, and this is actually quite helpful when it comes to understanding the best way that I've ever found in business or in personal life for delivering a negative message. So it's called the insult sandwich, but it's really a way of also not only delivering an insult, but delivering negative information. So the first bit here, and you can see that we have a delicious looking, um, possibly a Big Mac, I'm not really sure. It's a Big Mac looking burger. I picked something that looked good. The first thing we have is the bun here, and it consists of three parts, the Stewie insult sandwich. Call it the Stewie Insult Sandwich model. <laughs> the Stewie Insult Sandwich model consists of three parts. The first part is the bun. That is the compliment or positive greeting. If you were delivering, say, negative information to a customer or client in a letter, possibly a letter that could also be an assignment for this course, the first thing you might do within that letter is include a positive greeting. Well, of course, you might think to yourself, Ms. Walton, I'm not going to be rude to this customer, but you might want to find ways to not just greet the customer in a positive way, but to throw in something nice at the very beginning of the letter or the message in addition to that positive greeting. The second layer, which I know you could say this consists of many layers, but I'm taking it down into three pieces here because that's what Stewie suggest we do. The second layer or the meat of the sandwich is the bad news because that's the goal. We put the bad news here because and it's the meat of the sandwich because it's the purpose of what we're trying to do here. We're trying to deliver the insult or bad news 
it seems to work well here for a lot of reasons. Now, first off, people never like to hear bad news. And there are those of us in the world who say, hey, I like to know my bad news first. But the general population seems to like to have some kind of positive information and then the bad based on my experience in business and in personal communications. And this seems to be something uh, that by and large is accepted throughout business communications. We have our, our compliment or positive greeting. So hello, dear customer. It's I'm pleased to be able to communicate with you about our newest products, some of which I'll tell you about later in this letter. But first, or I'm pleased that you've been a customer with us for the past 10 years and we greatly value your participation in any loyalty programs we might have, etc. And then unfortunately, I'm writing to let you know about X, Y, and Z. We have discontinued X, Y, and Z. And then we close with a compliment and or more positive information or a positive closing. And the positive closing, we make it the best we can. The best thing we can do is figure out how the bad news is impacting this customer and figure out the best way we can reconcile this within reason within our company. And sometimes there's not a lot we can do. Sometimes we can offer them a voucher for half off of their next purchase, or we can offer our personal uh, assistance with a matter and we can give them our phone number to make sure they know that they can reach out to a specific voice. And sometimes um, in sales, if there's something's being discontinued and or there's difficulty getting a part for a car or something like that, uh, there are salespeople who will, or sales managers who will include their phone number and even their cell phone number at the bottom of a letter to a customer, letting them know that this is another way you can get in touch with me and I'm giving you this additional information because I consider you important to me and you're very valuable. And you say things like that. And even though you're delivering the bad news or the insult, it comes across more smoothly. And this is, in general, the way that bad news is communicated in, or negative messages are communicated in the best way possible within business communication. It's the stewy insult sandwich. Positive information or positive greeting or compliment, bad news, compliment and or positive closing. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. Happy writing.